Welcome back to the shop and I've been wanting to tackle this week's project for a long time. We're gonna be installing this Tempoware 7,500 watt electric forced air shop heater. I know, I know, go ahead and say it. It's so small. It's okay, trust me, I thought the exact same thing. Hopefully it packs a punch. We just unboxed it and it is a nice looking unit. It's very well built, seems pretty nice. It comes with a mounting bracket and it also comes with a remote. Now, like I said before, this is a 7,500 watt unit. And per my research, it requires eight gauge wire. So if you do the math on buying the actual wire, the 7,500 watt unit is about the biggest I wanted to go. There was a threshold there where the cost of the wire required for a bigger heater was not really worth it. It would almost be worth it just adding another 7,500 watt unit down the road if this isn't sufficient. That being said, we are running a 40 amp breaker dual pull, which is what's required from this heater. And then we have the eight gauge corresponding wire for your 40 amp breaker. We're gonna run it in a three quarter inch plastic conduit. And then we have some colored electrical tape because I'm gonna run all black wire. I know people hate that, but I will label it accordingly. This stuff is pricey. A few of the other things we're gonna need is some wood to metal screws or fasteners to mount our bracket. And then an electrical tester to make sure that we have no power when we go to install this. Now for the mounting bracket, this is what it came with, but I'm not gonna mount it all the way up to the ceiling because my ceilings are 11 feet tall. I want it to be a little bit lower because obviously it's a little smaller of a unit. So I'm not sure how much is actually gonna heat. With that said, the cost of metal is through the roof. So I am gonna make my mounting bracket for this piece out of a two by four. So let's go knock that out now. This came out nice and I think it's gonna work perfectly. Now I'm gonna mount this to the metal wall studs of the building with these wood to metal screws. I'll put these and all the items I'm gonna use in the links below in the description. I know sometimes it can be a little difficult to mount stuff to a metal shop. And these I found work great for mounting two by fours or anything else to the actual metal studs on a square tube building. So we are gonna mount this as close as we can to the electrical panel because the wire, like I said, is very expensive. So ours is gonna be mounted from the first truss to the top of the wall, and then it'll just hang right below here where we want it. Before we get started, one last thing, I'm not a professional electrician, I'm a professional homeowner, and I always recommend you hire a professional or get their opinion first before you mess with any kind of electrical. That being said, let's get to work. mounting bracket is secured to the wall. Now we're gonna take the heater's bracket and get it mounted. And it does have a three position mounting spot for this bracket. And it comes with these knobs you can twist and easily tilt this thing if you want, which that's probably what I'll do. We'll tilt it down so it kind of faces our work area. I'm gonna go ahead and measure my wall distance because the requirement is 10 inches from the back side of this heater to any wall. 14 inches would be safe. So I'm gonna go up there, measure that two by four, 14 inches out and punch a hole in it. Now for the solo, never ask for help, <laughs> balancing act. See if we can get it mounted. So I did do the single bolt mount, that way I can swivel it if I want to and kind of turn it where I need it. Cause like I said, I'm not sure how powerful this heater will be, but big things can come in small packages, right? Perfect. All right, here's the mounting. I didn't overthink it. I just used a carriage bolt and a big washer. And then the same thing on the top, I actually used a Big fender washer and a thumb screw. That way it can be easily moved or adjusted, tilted. 
but I think it's gonna work. So I step back to see how it looks. It still looks tiny. God, that's a small heater, but 7,500 watts. Let's hope it works. Now we're on to the wiring. We're gonna start at the unit and work our way down. So we just have our three quarter inch. We got a couple 90s, a couple straight pieces, and we got our wiring. So I'm gonna run all my conduit first, see if I can run it all the way down to the panel, and then I'll pull all my wires through. Now we just pull the access panel off the bottom. All right, note to anyone doing this on their own, take your panel off the bottom first before you hang the unit up. So I think just putting it back on would be a lot easier than taking it off when it's hanging in the air. Yeah, there it goes. And look at there, we have our wiring instructions right there for inside the unit. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna have a little change of plans because I was going through my electrical bin and I found some of this liquid tight. Uh, so I'm gonna run my wiring in this and run this all the way to the heater. It's pretty much the same stuff. This is a little more costly to buy, but it's really good stuff. A lot of people don't run an interior. I wouldn't either, but I just happen to have it. So this piece right here will fit right into our breaker box and then I can just run this liquid tight all the way to the shop heater. It'll work perfect. It will be a little overkill, but I have it, it's free. I'm gonna use this stuff. That worked out perfect. Now we're gonna start running the wire. We are using eight gauge. I'm just gonna run it through a single line at a time. We need three lines. I just ran that last line. So before I cut this last one, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with green electrical tape. And this will be the ground. We will tape this one as well. So now we know that we have two blacks for hot and one green. So here's where we're at right now. We have all the wires ran. We have our three wires ran in our liquid tight, pretty much whip going up to our heater right there. And then the three same wires are sticking out up top. So now I'm at a point where I got to kill the power. We're going to go dark and then I'm going to wire all this up. We'll power it back up and then I'll walk you through everything we did to hook it up. And here's the two black wires hooked up to our 40 amp breaker and the green ground wires hooked up to our ground bar on the panel and they all run through the liquid tight all the way to the heater. Wiring the heater was super simple as well. There was an attachment point to connect your conduit to the actual box, two hot lugs right in front of that connection point, and then the green just grounded right to the box. Everything is good to go. That was a pretty straightforward and easy install. Now all we have to do is flip the breaker, make sure we have power and we install the wiring correctly. And then we'll get some thermometers in here and see how fast and if it can raise the temperature in the shop. So I'm gonna flip the breaker on and we'll see what she does. All right, so we got power. I just heard it beep. There you go. So we got a mode on here. It looks like it switches from high to low. We'll keep that on high and then the temperature button. Okay. So this is the set temperature. So let's put it, let's keep it at 80 and it says it is 41 degrees in the shop. It looks like there's two thermometer probes or temperature probes in the unit. There's one for the incoming air, which is reading the 41 degrees. And then there's one that's inside there a little further and that will bring it up to 80 degrees. And I'm guessing when those two numbers meet or match, then the unit will shut off. So far it's putting out some decent heat and it has some pretty good volume on the fan, which surprised me, like I said. But let's give this thing a fighting chance. As you can see on my garage door opener right here, it is 45 degrees in the shop. So everything in here is about 45 degrees. So I'm gonna give it 30 minutes and then I'm gonna use my temp gun and we'll go around and check a couple items in the air and just see if it raises it 
10 degrees. If it can raise the shop temperature 10 degrees and just knock off that, you know, frosty feeling once it gets below 40, that would be perfect. That is all I would expect out of this little guy. So we're gonna do that. We'll come back in 30 minutes and we'll check everything and see what the temperature is. So it's been about 30 minutes. The shop is definitely a little bit warmer. Definitely feel, feels like it's knocked the edge off. But let's check this out and see what the air temp is. Standing in front of it, it's actually kind of hard because it's pretty dang hot. So right now it's showing 350 to 400 coming out of the front of the fan, which is pretty hot. So it says on the temperature gauge on the thermostat that has raised it to 61 degrees from 45. It was around like 42 or 45, I believe this morning. And as you can see over here on the table, I have some tools sitting around like this drill, for instance, was sitting here overnight. This thing was 42 degrees. I think when we came in and now it's warmed it up to 54. And then the garage thermostat on our button says it is at 50 degrees. So 30 minutes is definitely raised it. I would say probably five to eight degrees varying, but that's not bad. I really didn't expect anything more than that. I bet you give it 30 more minutes. It would raise it 10 degrees pretty easily. Let's try it. Well, it's been another 30 minutes and as you can see our drill is at 55 degrees our thermostat on our garage door opener is saying we are at 60 degrees and the thermostat on the heater is saying it's at 71. so i think it's safe to assume that it did bring the shop temperature up a good 10 degrees which is exactly what we are going for That sums up another project and an awesome install and review of this Tempware 7500 watt heater. Now, one thing you want to remember is heating your shop or garage. A lot of it is about the insulation factor. And in this two metal structure that we have here, which is 26 by 40, I would say the insulation is probably rated at poor because there is a lot of things that I have to update and finish off like the eave. There's no insulation in there. So there is a little bit of airflow. So just keep that in mind. This heater would work perfectly if you had a completely sealed up two car garage, probably more than efficient. But for us, it is a little bit lacking, but it does raise the temp 10 degrees and take the chill off, which is exactly what I was expecting and needed. Once I complete all the insulation and maybe bring my uh, R factor up a little bit on this metal building this will perform perfectly now i'll definitely give this heater two thumbs up but remember it is a budget entry level shop heater there are much better more expensive options that will work way better but this one came in right around 180 dollars and then was about 50 dollars in material to hook it all up so keep that in mind this is the budget way to go and as always thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe and we will see you next week for another project god bless